be on to everybody. <laughs> everybody. I'm not just everyone. <laughs> Give you some mercy. Let's hook on John in the house. It's your brother Travis. Greetings, one and all. So, we're gonna get on the topic that I wanted to get on this morning. But I know that many people was at church, so I never wanted, you know, who we'd want to join the live to miss the live. And so, we're gonna get back on the topic. Let me wait for some more. So people to join in. Alright. So let me share this out in the meantime. Alright. Alright, I can see that Tony is in the building. Hey Tony, greetings. Huh? Huh? I guess it's a go. Right, I said go. Right, yes, sir. Right. So we have Charlene in the house. Tony is in the building. Greetings to you. Peace be unto you and your household, Tony. Uh, let's see who, said, who else is in the building. We have Venomous Music in the house. Dana is in the building as well. Andrea is in the house. Alright. We're going to talk about a topic that I want to talk about this morning. But I realize that most people might be at church. So I say I'm going to do it like around this hour. Usually I go out and work. So I'm basically going to get on the job. Sell those muffins. So I just drive out. But before I get to work, I'm going to get on the topic. We're going to talk about um, Bible lessons from 1 Kings chapter 13 we're gonna talk about that so if you have a bible well i have three different bibles here i have this bible here the niv i have the king james version and i also have here uh the gideon bible as well but i feel like i'm gonna read from the niv because for some strange reason um it's much more it's like it kind of much more clearer without the d the d and the dough and the dough and the cans you know and the cannots you know what i mean but so i'm gonna use this one for today so for all those who are just joining in, we're gonna talk about a bible lesson from the book of first kings chapter 13. so for all those who are here if you're at home you have a bible near you you know you can follow me in your scriptures your version might be different from my version that i'm gonna read from but the lesson is still the same so we're gonna get into that you don't go to church today oh no no tony no tony and never went to church today okay all right so for all those who are here just share the soul to your brothers and sisters in christ when i discuss a topic and first kings chapter 13 now with this one is loaded with lessons. Loaded, loaded with lessons. The whole Bible is loaded with lessons. Hmm. So let me just share this out some more. For all those who are here, you can tap the screen like it's what Tony is doing here, tapping the screen. and also you can share it out as well so if you want to help this live start fast <laughs> you know just stop the screen and share it out i'm going to give this for at least um, at least two three more minutes and then we're going to get started all right let me just give me some just give me three minutes i'm going to put out my put out my goods right now <laughs> as well anybody pass i'll be stopping and sitting there
jump up but in camera all right so um, what version um, Bible do you guys have let me see which one what version Bible do you have right now at your house are you using now all right. All right, let me share this out some more So I'm telling you guys, this one, this one here is loaded with gems when it comes to, um, when it comes to spiritual warfare, when it comes to spiritual warfare, when it comes to following the commandments of God, when it comes to doing God's work. First Kings chapter 13, let me just get in, let me just go, go there right now. All right, thanks Charlene for sharing this out. Thank you Charlene, highly appreciate your sharing this out as well. All right, you can see that Elizabeth joined back on now. We're gonna get back on the topic Elizabeth that we wanted to go on this morning. Elizabeth was here. All right, Kerry, come back on as well. Greetings Kerry. So we're gonna get back on the topic, guys. Generational curses, the wealth gap is burgeoning. Half the city they know me through these Israelite conversions. I think we have a disturbance. Calls. So greetings again, Kerry. We're gonna go back on the we're gonna go on the topic that they want we wanted to go on um, this morning. So we're gonna these four more people to join on in the public and then we're gonna get started, alright? For all those who want to get this started, just help me. Help me reach to the number. So the topic I wanted to talk on what I really want to talk on is um, our parents taught us witchcraft. We're gonna talk. We're gonna talk about that very soon. But we get more information on it. We wanna gather more information and you know get scriptures as well to back up what I'm saying. Hey, Tony and hey. Oh, just church has finished. Awesome. So start at the right time. Good. Afternoon, Tony, and good afternoon, Elizabeth, as well. Good to see you here, wifey. <laughs> All right. 
So the topic I want to talk on, guys, was um, um, our parents and our elders taught us witchcraft. You know, I want to get on that topic, but I'm going to talk about this one today and then probably I get on the next one tomorrow. You know, but, but, but in all honesty, guys, we, 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 we majority, especially, especially us in the Caribbean, we were all taught witchcraft practices, even in the Christian community. We were all taught witchcraft, guys. You know, we're all taught that you know if you want a long, if you want, a, if you want, you know, wind this up. If you want a good marriage, <laughs> if you want a marriage and you want to keep the man, <laughs> you should put um, your menstrual in his soup or his stew peas. You know, to keep a man. That's there's no way. In, there's no way in the scriptures that say that, man. There's no way in the scripture that says if you want marriage, you should put something in the man's stew peas or in his soup. Or if you want to keep the woman, you should, I don't know, get something and wrap up the curtain and repeat certain strings of words. You know, sh nobody can show me a scripture that, that, that's what they say. If you want a good marriage, you should do that. You know, so we're basically taught witchcraft all our life, especially in the Christian community, guys. Especially in the Christian community. Our Christian mothers, our Christian fathers, our Christian grandmother, grandfather, honku, you know. You know, they taught us witchcraft. You know, so if you want a good marriage, do that. If you want to keep the man, if you want to keep the woman, you do these, you do these things. They're not telling you, look. If you want to have a good man as a woman, you know, learn submission, learn to become become submissive. You know, so you can actually be a, a, a woman that you want, be any type of woman that you want, you know. You know, no man can say nothing to me or whatever. And at the same time, you want marriage. And so to keep that marriage, you know, you have to work with craft. And these things are taught by Christian people. Our Christian people are telling us to work with craft to keep a marriage. So we're not following scripture to keep a marriage, we're following obia and witchcraft to keep marriages. You know, they tell the young men if they want to be successful, if they want to clear their, their grounds or cut off crosses or whatever and become successful, that you should dip into, you know, you know, being lime, bathing lime and bathing blue, you know, pure witchcraft. They never, they're not teaching us scriptures. You know, if you want your life to change, you know, if you want things to change in your life, you know, go and get that sea water and, you know, map out your room or map out your house with the sea water or the, the turpentine or whatever it is. No way in the scripture we see none of these things. And these things are taught to us by our forefathers or by our parents. And so we're going to get into that topic um, soon about our Christian parents, our Christian elders taught us witchcraft. They never taught us the word. No way when you're in trouble or when you're in a certain situation do they teach us that. Alright then, look. Uh, you're going through a witchcraft attack right now. The first thing you need, that you need to do is um, repent. You know, go to God and repent. Ask God to clean you up. You know, they're not telling you that. They tell you to go and do some form of witchcraft practices. They're not telling you that all right, you're with this young man or you're with this young woman and you guys are fornicating, so you're giving the, deli the, the devil legality in your life to operate in your life. So guess what? If you guys truly serious about each other and want to see each other advance, then get married because marriage is honorable, you know, unto God and the bed and the file. And they're not telling you that. They're telling you to just work witchcraft to get off crosses off of you. They're telling you to work witchcraft to change your life. They're telling you to work witchcraft to improve your life. And when you do all these things, things do change. Don't believe it. It's not going to change. Things actually change. Things actually change for the better for a while. And then people, after they work in witchcraft, they go to church you know, and say, Oh, God has been good. You know, God has been good when they know deep down they wasn't doing anything that God said they told them to do. They was doing something that man told them to do, which, was, which is a basically a witchcraft practice. And so, I'm telling you guys, this is how it is. This is how it actually is right now. Tamika says, it's a great topic, but we can't blame them. They didn't know better. Thank God for his mercy upon us. We give thanks for that. We give thanks for that. But the truth is, majority of them knew Tamika. You know why? Ask them what they did. Majority of them. Like, ask them what they really do for that happen. And they will not tell you. 
majority, not my, uh, let's, do, let's use, to be safe, let's use the numbers, to be safe, about 50% of them actually knew what they were doing, because they're not going around telling anybody that, you know, just the other day, I work myself, I, 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 I um, put something in my husband's uh, stupies, and that's the reason why we are together now, they're not going to tell anybody that, they're not going to tell anybody that, which one I got, which, which woman I come to you and say, that's the other day, I put, to the old woman making my husband we put something nice two peas and that's how we are together right now no they're not tell you that guys they're not gonna tell you so most of them know what they're doing so that's why they will never go, go to church and give a testimony and say oh i have a testimony <laughs> i mapped my house with certain time <laughs> no they will not tell you guys they will only come and tell you oh god has been good and god has done this in my life <laughs> They would not tell you the activity that, that, that they do. So they know, guys. Don't believe that they don't know. They know. And they will quote all the scriptures afterwards, like all the scriptures they didn't follow. When deep down, they weren't following the scriptures, guys. <laughs> don't be fool. Don't be fool. Some of them know. Some of them knew what they were doing, guys. They knew what they were getting themselves into. <laughs> None of them is proud to come and tell you what they did. So how come they think that they do know? They actually knew um sis. They knew sis. They actually know. Alright, so let's see. Alright, style radio is in the building. And so now we now as to, uh, have to break, try to break away from this now. Break away. Since we know better now, let us strive to do better let us strive to do better since we know better now so now we're going to wait for three more people to join on and then we're going to get started Elizabeth says I thought this whole period into stupies was a myth but hearing you saying it it's obvious it's, yeah it's real it's real I'm telling you it's real real it's real when I was young, I used to hear it too. I was like, people really would do something like that? But it's actually real. It's actually real. All these superstitious beliefs as well. You know what I mean? Give me a minute, guys. So you know what, I'm gonna get this started and then I will actually and then I will repost it on YouTube for all those who miss who miss it. So we're gonna go into first kings. This is something that I, I went over um, with with my wife with this morning. So I'm gonna actually teach it to the body as well. So we're gonna go um into first kings. First Kings chapter 13. First Kings chapter 13. So for all those who are here, you find if, if you're gonna read along with me, just let me know if you find the scripture. If you are just gonna just listen to me, uh, let me know if you can hear me from now. I'll put a one in the comment section. I'm gonna get started. Alright, style radio so one, Elizabeth so one. Anybody else is hearing me? Let me know if you can hear me. Wifey, are you here? Everybody is hearing. 
Essence Arkansas one as well. Awesome. All right, we have Candy in the house. Hey, Candy, how you doing? It's been a while, Candy. Good to see you. Tamika say one. YP is actually responding but probably she's a far far away from the phone <laughs> all right first kings first kings chapter 13 we're gonna go to the whole chapter of first kings and um we're gonna discuss the lessons from this here it's vitally important for us to pay attention to everything that's been said here because it's loaded with gems guys so first Kings chapter 13 here we go it's by the word of the lord so by the word of the lord by the word of the Lord, a man of God came from Judah to Bethel as Jeroboam was standing by the altar to make an offering. So this King Jeroboam was always making offerings unto, a, a, unto an altar, but it was not a godly altar. It was not this altar. It was an ungodly altar, basically, that's loaded with demons. Verse 2 says, By the word of the Lord, he cried out, against the altar 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 this is what the lord says now this is very funny guys this is quite funny not funny in the sense of laughing but funny that um when the, this man of god came there unto the altar which jeroboam was making a sacrifice remember jeroboam was actually standing there making an offering unto the altar what one, one bro Good. yeah man Uh, Yo, respect. I'm gonna get some hundreds of wires. If I go to the supermarket, I'm gonna go to the police station. Oh, cool. Go and check them. So, you have been smoking on about $25. How much feet? About $50. Man, I'm gonna cut everything I raise on the other. Everything I raise on the other. Alright, bro. Man, bless up. So, the funny thing, guys, that's, that's here is that. The man of God never came and spoke against King Jeroboam. He, come and, he came and speak against the altar. It's so funny that when we always hear about spiritual warfare, guys, if there's any altar that's set against you, if there's any witchcraft practice that's set against you, you are, you, are, you are not to speak against the man who is actually in the act of doing these things, but speak against the works that the man is doing, the altar that he's setting. So whenever you do it, taking out any um, spiritual warfare, guys, it's not flesh and blood. It's not flesh and blood. And we all know that. We all know the scripture as well, right? That we rest not with flesh and blood, right? But this is a living proof of what this man is doing here. So he never came and said, Jeroboam, Jeroboam. He never come and said that. Listen to what he said in verse 2. He said, by the word of the Lord, he cried out. And it's vitally important to make note as he said it by the word of the Lord. It's very good when you're taking on a warfare as well to use the word of God. Your words are not as powerful as the word of, the God, of, of God. So you find scriptures when you're doing spiritual warfare, guys. You find scriptures that can assist you in the spiritual warfare again. Like, no weapon of form against me shall prosper. And every tongue that rises against me, you know, I shall, I shall condemn. Because the Bible said, thou shall condemn. He was at a... Um, um, scriptures like greater is he that's in me than he that's in this world and I use that same power that's in me to come against you see you use, you see, you use these scriptures guys so it's, so it's quite clear here that the man of God that came from Judah came and he came by the word of God verse 2 let's go back to verse 2 he said by the word of God he cried out against the altar wow against the altar and he said altar altar this is what the Lord says a son named Josiah will be born to the house of David on you he will sacrifice the priests of the high places who make offerings here and human bones will be burned on you he's talking to the altar now to the carnal man who don't know anything about spiritual warfare in his mind he's saying that this this man says a man of God but <laughs> you know I think it's kind of something kind of wrong up here because in past 
King Jeroboam, him pass everybody who is here and he's gonna speak to an altar, something wrong with him and man. <laughs> you know, to the carnal mind but to the spiritual mind. You know that that altar has demonic hosts on that that's operating on the behalf of those who are sacrificing unto them. And so he, he, he came and he went unto the source. He never went to, the, to any other man, the fleshly man, to King Jeroboam or any, any of them. He went straight to the source to destroy the source, to speak against that source. And this is what we have to do as children of God. When we are taking on spiritual warfare, we deal with the source of the thing. So the Bible says that we should put on the full armor of God that we may be able to withstand the wiles of the devil not the wiles of your manager not the wiles of your co-worker not the wiles of your neighbor not the wiles of your friend that was um, your, your, your friend that was close to you who started doing these things even though they are being influenced to do these things against you he never say against the wiles of any flesh and blood he say against the wiles of who? the devil, a spirit and so taking on spiritual warfare is truly coming against those spirits guys so this one is vitally important for you to know for you to know so if you believe that it is any altar against your life guys you don't speak against the person you believe is breaking that altar call the evil call them by name you break that altar in the name of jesus christ you plead the blood against such an altar you know you speak the word against such altar that they may be null and void and all the works and the activity that they're trying to activate in your life may be null and void broken down break bind cast away in the name of jesus christ that's how we do it that's spiritual warfare. Everybody's here? Let me know if you're hearing me because I'm on a roll. <laughs> Let me know if you're hearing me, guys. We're on a roll to today. We're on a roll today. <laughs> Alright. So verse 3. Verse 3 says now, this is the sign. Hold on, let me go. Verse 3 said, that same day, the man of God gave a sign. This is the sign the Lord has declared. This is the sign that the Lord has declared. The altar will be split apart and the ashes on it will be poured out. When King Jeroboam heard what the man of God cried out, cried against the altar at Bethel, he stretched his hand on out. He stretched out his hand from the altar, right? And said, Seize him. So he speaks, so, so he now, he is now coming against the man, you know, but the hand he stretched out towards the man shriveled up so that he could not pull it back. So you see, when you're attacking, doing a spiritual attack the right way guys, when these people come against you, they will be put to shame when you go about it the right way. Can you imagine if you went off in there guys, doing a fist to fist hand to hand come back with Jeroboam and not doing the and not attack and not going about this the right way what would happen you know there would be just a physical fight there you know you, you just go in there and say Jeroboam you you walk away for all the people obia 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 from the children of Israel you walk away for obia out there you know you know say I come and say done you <laughs> you know that we turn out differently when you're doing this the right way guys even those who are working the witchcraft against you working the witchcraft in general when they try to stretch it in against you something will happen to them because you've broken their source they don't have any strength anymore right let's read let's continue verse 5 shalom kimbo verse 5 also the altar was split apart and its ashes poured, poured, poured out according to the sign given by the man of God by the word of the Lord keep that in mind guys the word of the Lord Verse 6 now. Then the king said to the man of God, Intercede with, with, with the Lord your God and pray for me that my hand may be restored. <laughs> and this is how it goes. You see, when you take on spiritual warfare in the right way, guys, even those those who are trying to work it against you will have to see you and wish you well. Those of us who, who, who are trying to work it against you will sometime will come to you asking me for mercy. And I've had stories like that. A sister the other day told me about a story like that. Where this woman, where this woman, um, where this where this woman was actually um, trying to work something against her, but she just continued to pray, praying even for her, praise doing her prison and worship, 
And after a while, the same woman came to her confessing that the devil was using her. That the devil was actually using her against her. And this is how it works, guys. When you go about this the right way, they themselves will have to come to you asking for mercy. <laughs> no, they, no, no, they themselves have said that if boy feel Obi a man stronger than feed them. You, how much money you pay for do this Obi against them? Especially they so carnal minded that they, that the only thing that they believe in is Obi. This is better, Travis. So if Mir is working witchcraft on me, so I should not say her name in prayer to God. No, I'm not saying that you should not say like say pray. You should not be praying against her. Of course, you should be praying about her. Of course, you should pray that you know she may turn from her wicked ways. Of course, you should be praying for her in the sense that she has now tied herself up in a situation with an other demon. She has now made her life difficult. She don't even know. And also she have made the life of her children and all those that she live with. Everybody, let me tell you about which witchcraft. Give me a minute, guys. One thing about witchcraft you should know guys is that anybody's working witchcraft they setting up any altar in their house it affects everybody in their house so not only are they taking on a, a covenant making a covenant with uh with spirit or with spirits they know they know gonna make the, their life hard for them and the life of their children and the children's children and so you have to look when you look at it from that perspective Sometimes you have to be praying for them to the praying for them because they don't know what they're doing unto themselves and unto their children and their children's children. And their children's children children. That's why the most has to pray for them. There's, a, there's also deeper spiritual reasons of why God says say we should do something. It's not just to say pray for them, just to pray for them sake. Is that they are they have they have no they have no tied up and not themselves with a deity. That are gonna eventually destroy them because demons have no loyalty demons are not loyal demons know their end demons end is the lake of fire they have no share and part with god anymore so they are not loyal guys they are not loyal and so now they have tied themselves up with with, with, a, with a deity that's not loyal and it's gonna only destroy them that's why you pray for them guys that's why you pray for them and so the Bible said, bless them as well, so that you can have a blessing. So the blessing is not so much even for them, 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 but for you. Speak blessings. So I'm not saying that you should not even probably mention them, but don't mention them in the sense of, say, Lord God, I want you to rain down fire, bring stone and thunder upon Mary. Fire brings stone and thunder wear down on the altars and all the works of the enemy and all these demons you remind them of the end too. But for you see the fleshly person, the fleshly person, you have to be praying for them, man. Them tie themselves, then wrapped up, them tangled up and then tie themselves up in a in a situation where you're gonna pay. You can't mock God. Nobody can mock God. Whatever a man saw, he gonna he's gonna reap. Said, just learned that the other day many Christians call call the person's name instead no you can't do that why you, yeah and they use Psalms to justify it now <laughs> I'm gonna learn a lot pray against the spirit not the person yes because the scripture clearly stated we rest not with flesh and blood so how come these people are actually quoting these scriptures and at the same time they still wrestling against the flesh and blood so it's like yeah God I hear you and matter of fact, I'm, I'm gonna quote that scripture, God, but I'm not gonna believe it. <laughs> That's basically what you're saying. Because they say, we wrestle not with flesh and blood, but principalities and powers. Right? And then right after you quote the scripture, you call up the flesh name. They come the flesh and blood name. So, let's stick to the scriptures, guys. And always, guys, always pray for the armor, the full armor of God to be over you. 
pray the full armor of God over you. Alright? So let's get back to the scriptures now. Let's get back to the scriptures. Because this one is power packed with lessons, guys. So first of all, we learn that we should be praying against the altar, the demonic force, not Jeroboam. Let's not pray against Jeroboam, guys. Let's pray against that altar and speak against that altar. Speak against that work of the devil. Speak against the, um, their attacks. Break those attacks. Alright, so let's continue from verse... Uh, let's start now from, from verse... Let's start, continue from verse 6. Then the king said to the man of God, Intercede with the Lord your God and pray for me that my hand may be restored. So the man of God intercede with the Lord and the king's hand was restored and it became as it was before. So you see that clearly? That if this man never understood spiritual warfare and understood what the real work was and what he should be praying about. He will not clearly say, King Jeroboam, Ya Obiawaka, I will not pray for God. I will not pray to God to restore your hand. I will not do that. Happy New Year. Alright. I will not do that. <laughs> I will not do that. You are Obia Waka, you deserve fear and shrivel up. And I will not pray to God for your hand to restore. But he knew the mission. He knew that mission at the time. He knew that the real war was against that altar. He knew that the real war was against the spiritual force. And so he actually prayed for him. He prayed for him. See, so you see that? He actually prayed that his hand was restored. You see that, guys? He clearly states here that he interceded with God. And the king's hand was restored and became as it was before. Clearly. So if you're going to pray for Mary, you pray so Mary get restored unto the purpose of God. Because the scripture clearly states that God desires no man to perish but for all to come to repentance. So in the, in the desire even Mary who is working that witchcraft against you to perish. You want Mary to come to repentance. But you see these demonic forces who don't have any repentance. You know, let them get them deal. Let God arise and let all them be scattered. Let God arise and let all of them be scattered. But the flesh, you pray for that flesh. According to the scripture here, you clearly state that you pray for the king. So your hand get restored, even though my big Obia Waka. Right? Even though it's Obia Waka, you still pray for him. And so guys, the lesson is jam-packed in this one chapter here. All right, give me a minute again, guys. Share this out. Share this out. Let's share this out. All right, I'm back. All right, so guys, so it clearly states here that he actually prayed for the Obia Walker, but he prayed against um, the works of the enemy. Thanks for all those who are just joining on and following as well. Welcome. Today we're talking about the lesson from First Kings chapter tr chapter thirteen. All right. So um. Elizabeth says obviously Christians and pastors are too praying Christians and pastors too are praying the wrong way by using the individual's name yeah facts it's facts 
Don't call the person name and say rain down, rain, rain down thunder. I'm speaking Psalms 30. I'm speaking Psalms 37 against the person. <laughs> Speaking Psalms 37 against the person and doing all that. That's the wrong way to pray guys. That's the one that's the wrong way to pray. We break um, Christ came to tear down the work of the of the devil. And so our real enemy is actually the devil. Alright, let's go to the scripture about now. Let's go back to the scripture. Welcome um, um Tani Bo and um, who else? I'm shiny boy. <laughs> I believe. Alright, so we're gonna go now to verse 7. Verse 7 of first Kings chapter 13. It says here, the king said to the to the man of God, Come home with me for a meal, and I will give you a gift. So now this Obiawaka now after the man just destroying works. Destroy the works that he's doing intentionally right he's now trying to invite this man to come and eat with him right and this is how these people will do it so when these people are working witchcraft against you is not and it's not working they will try to friend you up now they try to friend you up and get you in to destroy you so they try, they try, they try to friend you up now to so they can actually give you a gift to do to, to tear you down this is how it works keep this keep all this lesson in mind this is loaded with lessons guys loaded with lessons this is how it really works in the real world this is how it works in the real world so after they cannot destroy you after you after you put on a, a prayer against the altars that sit against your life breaking all those covenants that you probably make unknowingly because some people can't set things for your step and we are passing step on the step you're getting into a covenant some people might give you a pitney one one book so in the in the, in the, in the book um, and when in the, in the, in the take back the book they enter into a covenant and they have a certain legality some people do certain but when you break those altars break those covenants to all that them same one who was doing it will try to friend you up because they realizing they're gonna destroy you through witchcraft so they have to try to get closer to you and gain your trust so they have, they have, some, they have people come to you and offer you gifts offer you this offer you that you know but guys don't take everything from everybody don't be going around taking things from people especially people who you are very suspicious of, of don't take things from people guys because when they wish you are work one way they will try to make it work another way <laughs> when they wish you are work one way they try to work it another way so they try to friend you and offer you things so verse 7 said the king said to the man of god come home with me for a meal and i will give you a gift so not only my I, I go feed him, mass and games and add it unto it. Verse yes, about the man of God answered the king. This is powerful. The man of God answered the king. Even if you were to give me half your possessions, I would not go with you, nor will I eat bread and or, or drink or drink here. For I was commanded by the word of the Lord, you must not eat bread or drink water. I return by the way you came so he took another road and did not return by the way he had come to Bethel and this is how you have to do when you're in the spiritual warfare things guys so we all know there's a spiritual warfare but anything that the, that, that the most I command you to do that's what you do you don't you don't you don't go against the commandments of God and then believe that you're gonna win this spiritual warfare. That's is vitally important for everybody's taking on spiritual warfare. Anything anybody's taking on spiritual warfare, guys. The one of the first thing you want to do is to get right with God. I always say that. Ensure that you're living right. The main thing you should you should strive for in spiritual warfare is living right with God. You can't live wrong. You can't I can't even work witchcraft yourself too. In a horoscopes, in all these things, fornicating, especially doing all these things without repenting, with, with no repentance, doing all these things, and still I say you're gonna attack witches, still I say you're gonna attack the, the devil. You cannot work for the devil at the same time and attack the devil. Or if you attack your boss, or you should under, be under the ruling of the principality of the air, and still I try to attack him. You have a good of a God's side, guys. 
You have to come over God's side. They can't stand over the devil's side and say, God, rain down fire on the worst of the devil and you over there. You want, God, you want, you want fire rain down upon you as well? <laughs> and so, guys, it's vitally important for you to stick to God's commands. I have so many young people come to me all the time wanting prayer. Pray for this, pray, pray for that. And they don't want to change. They do not want to change. I see many of them say that things are, things are happening in their life. This is happening in their life. You know, crosses are follow them, all that. And them see them participate in the crosses. Them see them do the scamming. Them see them burn the candle. Them see them do all these things. I remember this young lady come on my life wanting prayer. And I added her. I said, I'm pray for her and so. And when I look on her, on her TikTok, she was basically promoting scamming. She was basically have, a, have all this money and a sing about she book a skull from North Carolina. Right? How you believe now you're gonna escape the devil's clutches when you're right in a clutch, when you participate with him? Huh? These are all the people who are coming for prayer all the time. Man of God, pray for this. God Travis, pray for this for me, pray for that. I'm like, what can I say to the most I know, knowing that you're in this predicament, knowing that you're, you're participating in this and you're not going to move away from it. You're not going to change either. What should I pray to God for? Huh? And that is why witchcraft has to be, and that is why these pastors now are working so much more witchcraft though. Because guess what? They must, they must get a higher demon to get away that demon from around you. Hey, you all right? All right, may I see you tomorrow? May I pass tomorrow? Hmm? May I pass you tomorrow? Yeah. May I pass tomorrow? Yeah. All right, see you tomorrow, yeah? <laughs> yeah. How can you fight the devil? How can you pray against the works of the devil that's manifesting in your life when you're actually participating with it? That's the whole thing. That's the whole thing, guys. And so one of the first things we want to do now is keep the, what God commands us to do in our mind. Keep that in our mind continually. If you fall short, guys, just repent quick. You know, get into repentance. Clean up yourself. Go on a, go on a one day fasting. When these things are happening in your life, go on a one day fasting, guys. Go on a one day fasting and just pray for God to clean you up. Repent of anything that you have done knowingly or unknowingly. Ask God to clean you up, guys, before you take on spiritual warfare. Right? Clean you up. Especially they're gonna drive fast and just ask God to clean you up. For ask God to forgive you. Tell God you're sorry for everything you have done. Said unto people. Forgive other people to clean you up, clean up things first before you start talking about your war. And put down that, 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 that armor as well. Greetings, um Marquita. Vitally important for you guys to know. Vitally for you to know. Exhale. Keep the commandments of the most high in your in your in your mind. Do not, do not transgress God's way of doing things and then believe you're gonna, you're gonna conquer the devil. So let's continue on. We're gonna go now to verse, verse 11. So he clearly state here that, you know, he's not gonna eat from the man who's working in witchcraft. He's not taking them from, he's not taking them from you because the most high, the word of God said me not to do it. As a matter of fact, me enter this way here, me go live out that way. That's what, that's what God said me to do. So you follow God's way. Verse 11 says, Now, now there was a certain old prophet living in Bethel, whose son came and told all that the man of God had done. <laughs> Come in again, guys. Come in again. Yeah. 
so yes guys so now now there's a certain old prophet living in Bethel whose son came and told him all that the man of God had done there that day what's going on brother that day they also told their father what he had said to the king their father asked, asked them which way did he go so now this this old old prophet now I'll find, I'll find out where this man of God go and his son showed him which road the man of God from Judah had taken so he said to his son saddle the donkey for me and when they had saddled the donkey for him he mounted it and rode after the man of God he found him sitting under an oak tree and asked are you the man of God who came from Judah um, and he said, I am he replied so the prophet said to him come come home with me and eat see, see this again now look how the devil work now guys the devil is now using an old time prophet to come to the man of God now and this is how it works you see when the devil can't get you to you from with a obia worker the devil will not try to get to you with somebody who claim to be a Christian claim to be a prophet claim to be an apostle claim to be one of you so he's saying, he's saying quote unquote one of you to now deceive you so he come up with the same thing where the, where, where, where the king with the obia worker basically call him obia worker where the king was basically saying to him the same suggestion again come and eat with me come and eat with me but now it's a different man talking so another king attack no more is an old time prophet <laughs> now he's a christian now somebody will tell him i'm a child of god no telling you to transgress the law of God. No telling you to transgress the command of God. And this is how the devil work, guys. The devil is relentless. So the devil, so the devil never worked through King Jeroboam. So I'm going to try to work through somebody who is one of the, who is one of them. And that's why, guys, you have to be very careful. Not because somebody said I'm a Christian, guys. You should know. Look at it. No one said, well, is that Christian that tell me that I tell me to do this now? So probably because a Christian tell me to do it, I can't do it. No, not because a person is a pastor or a pastor or whatever and he's even a big um, social media sensation means uh, okay everybody I follow him is a social media sensation right now that means uh, we must say true no guys and that's why you, and that's why in this walk you cannot be a respecter of persons don't be a respecter of anybody if 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 Brother Travis come on this live right now and tell us to start spinning your roll, guys, and we left off a Brother Travis live. If any day Brother Travis live come on this live and say I'm gonna start selling some some blue and some some oil and some salt and, and so leave off a Travis live. You know, when Brother Travis when Brother Travis live start get big and the YouTube channel and the YouTube channel start get big. And you know the the, 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 the the social media platform start get big now and you know everybody a flat brother Travis and brother Travis start start tell say yo you have to, you have to, you have to buy sugar and chew off in your yard and something there. Leave brother Travis live guys. Any day brother Travis at all tell if a chance God's word, leave off a brother Travis live. Not because brother Travis have a word for followers and subscribers. And it, and it goes same for everybody. I know that many of you guys respect me. But any day brother Travis, brother Travis step off from the word of God Step off from brother Travis And it goes same for anybody who is on this platform who's, who's, who, have, who have a level of influence Any day you see them move away from God's word guys You move away from them Dangerous people for you are No matter what they say them a prophet, man of God, apostle Super intergalactic whatever they want to call themselves Step away from them all right, let's continue now. Let's continue. All right. So 15, verse 15 says, So the prophet said to him, Come home with me and eat. The man of God said, I cannot turn back and go with you, nor can I eat bread or drink water with you in this place. So I'm clearly making know the commands for the most I give. Same way, he's reciting the, for the command. But well, listen what happened now. Listen what happened guys. Listen what happened. That's why you have to be very careful. <laughs> you have to be very careful. Verse 17 says, I have been told by, by the word of the Lord, you must not eat 
or drink water there or return by the way you came. Listen what the prophet said now. The old prophet answered and said, I too am a prophet as you are. <laughs> <laughs> I too am a prophet as you are. So, you know, them come to you and they say, Me a Christian. Yeah, you know, I'm a Christian like, just like you too, you know, me a Christian too, you know. Matter of fact, I'm not only a Christian, I'm a Holy Ghost filled Christian. Eh? I'm Holy Ghost filled. Matter of fact, I can speak in seven different tongues. <laughs> right? They come to you with that. But, then come to you and tell us that and give you all these labels. Say, I am this. Right? I am this. <laughs> I'm just saying something, Aunt Kerry. Well, I just curious if something is all I go, you know. Kerry said, Brother Travis, you know, you know, I'm not sure that I can say. <laughs> well, me have muffin over here, so. Oh, go ahead. No, 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 thank you, can Nice, you see? Yeah, nice, you see? Uh, respect, respect. <laughs> May I, may I check it tomorrow? Alright. When we have muffin and Celsius, if I want sugar, sugar is there. <laughs> so, this is how it works now, guys. So, you man clearly said to the old man of God that, look, me and one of you, I'm one of you. And listen what he said now. In verse 18, he said, The old prophet answered, I too am a prophet as you are. And an angel said to me, By the word of the Lord, Bring him back with your with with you to your house, so that he may eat bread and drink water. But he was lying to him. My goodness. So not because they're a prophet that no means they can't lie. The devil clearly used this man now to deceive the man of God, saying that look, instead of you if you use things where the man familiar with the, the man of God familiar with angels. If you're a man of God, you have to be familiar with angels if you're walking with God. For a good amount of time, you have to be familiar with it. Instead of use angels now, and an angel says, and, some, and that's why some of these people come now. And first, and first Corinthians chapter eleven verse three says, you know, they they will come to you using things that you're familiar with, come to you using even scriptures that you're familiar with. So now he used the word angel on this brother now, and his brother said, angel, yeah, me familiar with angels, right? That sound right. Because that's an angel. I've encountered angels before. And this is how they work too. They come to you using scriptures too. It's twisting scriptures to get you to do wrongs. Hmm. This is how it works, guys. This is how the devil works. So it's I to my prophet as you are. Alright, let's go to verse two. Let's go to verse 19. Um, so the man of God returned with him and ate and drink in his house. My goodness. He forget what God tell him from the beginning. Ah, because somebody has come and used the word angel on him. Hmm? So verse 20 says now, While they were sitting at the table, the word of the Lord came to the old prophet. So now God now speak to the old prophet. Now speak through the old prophet and to this man of God now. Hello. Alright guys, give me a minute again. Just bear with me today guys. God, this is still a powerful, a powerful lesson guys. Powerful lesson. Shirley. Shirley is in the building. Good afternoon, Shirley. So, what's the message? Okay, so we're gonna talk. We're talking about a lesson that we learned that we're learning from. We're taking out from First Kings, chapter thirteen, and we got through quite a. We're going quite a far away so far. So you'll have to watch this over to get the first the first part of it. All right, Shirley. Alright. 
<laughs> so the, the, the word of the Lord come now to the old prophet. Um, so while they were sitting and eating at the table, the word of the Lord came to the old prophet who had brought him back. He cried out to the man of God who had come from Judah. This is what the Lord says. You have defied. Chapter, is, chapter 13. You have defied the word of the Lord and have not kept the command. And have, and have, and have kept the command the Lord your God gave you. Mm. Do you see? You know, keep the word. Goodness. Verse 22 says now. You came back and ate and drank water in the place where he told you not to eat or drink. Therefore your body will not be buried in the tomb of your ancestors. Some a man never getting heritage. Usually when these prophets die and these men of God die, um, they bury them, you know, with their ancestors. Not even that you get again. Not even that you get again, guys. Verse 23 says, When the man of God had finished eating and drinking, the prophet who had brought him back saddled his donkey for him. So look okay. <laughs> here. This is the part. Where the man of God was like, he must still finish eat and drink same way. After he just get the message, he just still finish eat and drink, cause you know what, this is it for him. This is it for him right now, because him transgress the law of God, he transgress what God tell him to do. So he finish eat and drink same way, right? And have you, have you ever been in a situation like that <laughs> where you have to do something? I just say, <laughs> I'm gonna continue to do this here, man, cause. The consequences are gonna catch me anyway. <laughs> Alright, guys, give me a minute again. <laughs> so, the man has finished eating and drinking. Well, let's finish eating and drink here, man. <laughs> All right. Verse 24. As he went on his way, a lion met him on the road and killed him. And his body was left lying on the road, with both the donkey and the lion standing beside it. That's his body. So, in Joshua the law, and he paid the price. He paid the price, guys. They will now have legality for operating in life now. But guess what? Look who's look <laughs> look what look who really who really did it. Who really did it? Jesus. Guys, that's why it's vitally important for you guys on this walk. Not to be following what man is telling you, but stick to the word of God as best as possible. Whatever the most I command you to do, you stick to it, guys. You know, stick to you, you, you know, listen. Nobody will come to you telling you that they're a prophet or a priest. Then, then, can't I want to say them come from the, the, the tribe of Levi and then can intercede for you and uh, uh, for you and on behalf of you uh, to God? No, once they, once they come, then come, then I bring the word to you guys. Be very careful. <sighs> Why some. Some people who passed by saw the body lying there with the lion standing beside the body. And they went and reported it, uh, reported it in the city where the old prophet lived. When the prophet who had brought him back from his journey heard of it, he said, listen what he said, the same prophet will deceive him. The same prophet will deceive him, you know. Look what he said. It, it is the man of God who defied the word of the Lord, Lord God. The Lord has given him over to the lion, which has mauled him and killed him, as the word of the Lord has warned him. The same man will deceive you now. No, I mock you. The same one will come out and deceive you. The same Christian will come and tell you, same inter intergalactic Christian, the same one will come and deceive you. The same one now have a, make a mockery of you. I tell other people, say, at this Hindu and at that Hindu, what happened to him? The same one will come and deceive you. you know? The same one will deceive you now. I tell other people what you do, forget, forget what you get. The same somebody will come and deceive you. Now, I, now go around I, I tell everybody. Who, if, so, so for instance, somebody know you. The same somebody will deceive you now. And somebody else know, know them and say, You know, say this, I'm to Travis. 
I'm going to say, yeah, I don't know the reason why I'm to Travis, man. I don't know the reason I'm to Travis. Really? Is the reason I'm to Travis? It's because Travis this and Travis that and Travis this. And you know, until I say, he was being used. He was being used to deceive you. He say, yeah, at this in the one and that in the one. That's why happened to him. That's why God deal with him. <laughs> the same smuddy will deceive him. And the same smuddy will come and I say these things, guys. And that's why you're not, you're, not, you're not give your life over unto any man. You know, you're not, you're not turn an ear to the people about because they said I'm a Christian, guys. And the same one after they deceive you, and the same one I'm going to speak against you. And the same one I'm going to tell people about you. And the same one I'm going to do all these things. Hmm. Tony and say, so true, that's why we must be careful, careful of people. Too. Planting even seeds in your mind. We must be obedient to God. Amen. Yeah. And laugh to themselves after they deceive you. Laugh after you. After they don't deceive you. I laugh after you after they don't, you don't fall near demise. The self same one who come and deceive you. Tell a lie. Use Christian, use Christ, Christianity for pull you in. And you go beside him thinking he's a brother, thinking he's a, think she's a sister. Thinking she has your heart, thinking she have your best interest at, at, at heart, thinking that she's hearing from God, or thinking he's hearing from God, and go eat and drink with them. And after they enter into a covenant with them and they destroy you, them same one laugh after you and go tell other people, you know, forget it. And say, actually, you deserve it. Tell the guys, tell us this one is loaded, guys. Tell us this one is loaded with, with lessons. V loaded with lessons, guys. Loaded with lessons. So after I'm done, say all that now. Verse 27 says, The prophet said to his son, Elizabeth said, This is scary. Yeah. And it's facts. It's how the world works. It's how things are all actually happening. It's how things, it's how these great men fall. It's how great men fall. It's how great people of God fall. It's how many of you will fall if you don't take heed to the word of God. If you start to listen to the tradition of men rather than following the word of God. God bless us. That's why we must try the spirit. Yeah. Sometimes, guys, don't even try a spirit. It's like, as you meet, as you meet them, the spirit will in them tell on them. Don't be around you now. Like, ah, oh, me go try to understand them. You know, me go, me go, me go take them call and listen what they have to say. I've, I've fallen into that many times. So my time, as you see what they are up to, you just move it along. You, you know, you just stay around to see if you can work things out. Cause what them have in, have in store for you. Guys, what I'm having in store for you guys is not anything good. Because I've been there, I've been there so many times, guys. Till me, me have to truly learn. It's like somebody come along and you can re you, you, you can feel it in your body, in your, your whole body, I tell you, say. <laughs> Which is the Holy Spirit. But you can feel it, all oh, the Holy Spirit and move your body. You can feel it in your belly, your belly bottom. You can feel it in your chest. You can feel it all over your body. That this person. No, up to nothing good. Are you still all because you're saying something out of the mouth differently than what you feel? You start to probably what me I feel and so you go. Only for you know the long run you realize that that's exactly how it goes. But guess what? You deserve in a world of trouble. But after fact, probably you tie yourself with them to a point now where two years, no, I'm not put this so far. Probably a couple months of your life get taken away from you in trying to put back things together. So my time the trying of the spirit is listening clearly to what the spirit said to you from the beginning of time. Elizabeth said, uh, the Lord is showing me the ones who pretend to me. Yeah, the, the Lord will show you that. Um, I tell you, the Lord will show you that. That is why. And that is why. That's why that's why I always say, I'm not interested. Honestly, I'm not interested in friendships. It's not because I'm unfriendly, even though I'm an introvert. <laughs> I'm not interested in friendships, guys. I'm interested in teaching the word of God, in edifying people, and all those who, who are true will stick around. All those who are fake will eventually just fall off. I'm not here for the whole fleshly thing, the whole fleshly conversation, the whole fleshly relationships. I'm not here for that. Tony answer, once you. Once you identify the spirit that is that is no good, you don't entertain it. Don't entertain it. 
comment section associate says seven years was stolen from me so that's seven years seven years all because probably you know follow away your, your spirit they tell you say all this time eh? all because you know follow away the most idea tell you you know choose holy spirit all this time seven years get taken away eh? struggling sometimes you leave a struggle for the next relationship that you're gonna get off into Right? When it comes to like intimate relationships now. Maybe you're going to struggling all because you and that you know you and your present husband and your present wife now going to struggling all because they never listened to your spirit seven years ago, five years ago, three years ago, a year ago. Now your husband or your wife inherit the struggling of what um you feel to you feel to avoid. Christ the same. People come and go. Yahweh is forever. Amen. Yeah, Yah is forever. Curse is the one who puts their trust in man. Amen. Scripture. I love that. All right. Okay, let's continue now. Let's continue. We're gonna go to verse twenty-seven. The prophet said to his son, "Sell the donkey for me," and they did so. Then he went out and found the body lying on the road with the donkey and the lion standing respect bro and the lion standing beside it the lion had neither eaten the body nor mauled the donkey so the lion never um the, the, the lion never said eat up the body and like that he just kill him not even the donkey the lion the lion of trouble for sure yo. so the body so the prophets rather the prophet pick up the body of the man of god laid it on the donkey and brought it back to his own city to mourn for him and bury him my goodness this man knows him a mourn for the man when he just set up and i tell you some people come, come <laughs> you have some people who come with your graveside <laughs> you ever hear the song will say i don't want to be by the wayside for hypocrite to cry at my graveside <laughs> i don't want to be by the wayside for hypocrites come cry at my graveside I don't wanna be, don't wanna be your memory. You can't sing. Please just protect me from my enemies. Guys, the man set him up, the man talks at this window, and in the same time you're mourning for him. My goodness. My goodness. The man lied to him. <laughs> After the man lied to him and get him in trouble, him see him and take him up and send him a ball for him. My goodness, this is how it works. This is how it works. Some people are wanting to sorry for you. They're not sorry. Well, I'm not gonna say him. Yes, sir. definitely not sorry. But you have many people who see your downfall. You want them cause it, and then they go and learn sorry for you. I'm just using it that that day. I'm not saying that that's exactly what's going on here. But in our life, in this real life, you have some people. The same people who set you up. I your fall. I them same man come beside you about them sorry for you. What happened to you? I'm not sorry for you. And they know say them cause it. At least you fall into their trap and and that cause it no oh, well, i'm sorry for you what i'm sorry for you what happened to you i'm sorry for you that well, i'm sorry for you this i'm sorry for you that uh, why if anything <laughs> if you want anything that's what we know they know say them in night they know say they have a part to play for in night too I'm telling you <laughs> pistol said never heard of that song <laughs> Telling you guys, some blood like Lila. You don't trust. You don't trust people because they said I'm a prophet. You don't trust people because they said I'm this or I'm that, guys. You put your trust in the Most High. And by putting your trust in the Most High, you put your trust in the Most High's words. So anybody come to your traffic, you I try to get you into agreeing to the transgression against God's word. Man, move away from them. Move far away from them. Blessed is the man that walking in the council of the ungodly. Facts. Alright. So he mourned for him when he buried him. Verse 30 said, Then he laid the body in his own tomb, and they mourned over him and said, Alas, my brother. After burying him, burying him, he said to his sons, When I die, that's the old prophet now, when I die, bury me in the grave where the man of God is buried. My goodness, I don't know what was that for anyway. Lay my bones beside his bones for the message of for the message he declared by the word of the Lord against the altar in Bethel and against all the shrines and the high places in the towns of Samaria. 
will certainly come true. Even after this, oh, listen this now, listen this, listen this one now, listen this one now, listen this one now. The last verse, or the last two verses, he said, even after this, so even after all of this, Jeroboam did not change his evil ways. Jeroboam did not change his evil ways, but once more appointed priests for the high place from all sorts of people. Alright. From all sorts of people, anyone who wanted to become a priest, he consecrated for the high places. This was the sin of the house of Jeroboam that led to its downfall and so its destruction from the, and and to its destruction from the face of the earth so these people never change right after <laughs> that's why guys you do your work i you stay in god and you continue go on because case guys you'll be warning some of these same people some of these same people you'll be warning them you'll be performing miracle in front of them they see the works of god manifest through you and they still won't change they still won't change in wicked ways. They still won't change from the evil ways the same way. So you do your work or you move on and keep yourself safe in God. Because you don't know the man doing work. The man going doing what he's supposed to do. Yet he still falter because of a fake, a, a, a prophet who told him lies. And even though he come against those works and so, the people then still continue their sin. Still continue with them evil the same way. And I've heard stories. I have, I've heard stories guys of people who try to save demonic people people who constantly <laughs> let me tell you people you see why some people will never change guys and even when you're dead they still out there walk up and down and look for the next man if you destroy again guys you do your work whatever it is you're supposed to do and you stay in God because I've heard stories and <laughs> If I, if I never have, if the most I never send a wife my way who constantly warn me while I'm doing this ministry, probably I will fall in that too. Where I will give myself over to people that will never change, that will still be in their evil ways and probably me would have dead in the process. Because I have a heart towards people. I have a heart towards people. I'm telling you. I have a good heart towards people guys and we give over myself to people like that it's, and it, naturally I'm like that but all praises to the most I got of Israel I didn't send me a wife to warn me so look you know make this a mistake yeah because some of them people yeah now go change so you they are do your ministry brother Travis with these people some of them have evil agendas some of them are come to you them are witch them are warlock some of them them are coming to the guise of Christianity they destroy you and when you are dead, they walk up and down the same way as the evil same way. Huh. Go wind this up. All these scriptures, all these scriptures were written a four time for our benefit and for our profit and also for our warning. May I take this a warning here guys? So as much as I love people, as much as I have a heart for people, as much as I want people to change for the better and all that, I will not be giving over my salvation for anybody. Because when I die, when, when them set me up, or them give me a gift, or them jinx me, or them ex me, or whatever, and me lose my life, and me lose my way in God. Them same one, them same one will continue on with them evil. None go change. And some people, guys, on this path will never change. There's some people on this path you can never truly help. They only come to do what the devil is here doing at this moment. I want to kill, rob, kill, and destroy, and nothing else. Nothing else. Crystal says, This is wisdom. Have you read Sarah before, brother? Yes, I've read the book of Sarah before, Ecclesiasticus. I have the Apocrypha. And I, I, the funny thing is, I've read that um, in the Apocrypha too, you know, I've read it in the Apocrypha. That's, that's so funny. They talk about it, the book of Sirach. I've read that in the Apocrypha as well. We talk about put, putting interest into friends and all that. And they only friend you for benefit and gain. And, to, and when, after they destroy you, they laugh after you. So me, I praise the most I got of Israel. 
that there's they, they, that strike a balance when it comes to that by bringing me a wonderful wife. The, anybody who fear the most, and let me just say this: anybody who fear the most, I will find a good wife. Anybody that fear the most, I will find a good husband. Keep in fear of the most, I guys, guys, and God will put the right people in your life. Let me just put that there as well. Let me wind this up. <coughs> <coughs> Mr. Grant, greetings to you, brother. Good to see you. What's going on here? <clears throat> Mr. Grant says, Yeah, you are talking truth. It reminds me of the book. Yeah, it's actually in the book. I've read, uh, read that before. So this is a powerful lesson to, um, <laughs> tonight, <laughs> today guys, from the book, from the first Kings chapter 13, loaded with, with, with lessons, loaded with lessons. So let me see if I, I can try to pick out a couple of the lessons before I leave from here. The first lesson is that when the man of God came to the altar, he never spoke against Jeroboam. He never spoke against Jeroboam, he spoke against the altar. So when you take on spiritual warfare, you don't speak against the flesh. And the blood aren't like that. They speak against the works of the devil. That altar. The man literally speak to the altar. Altar, altar. Watch the chapter and verse again. Um, so the, the lesson we're drawing from is from 1 Kings chapter 13. 1 Kings chapter 13. So for all those who are just joining on, I'm going to repost this on the YouTube. You can watch it over. Load it with gems. Matter of fact, just go and read 1 Kings. And just think while they're reading. Pray while they're reading. Read 1 Kings chapter 13. Load it with lessons, guys. Load it with a whole lot of lessons in just one single chapter. In just one single chapter. My goodness. I feel like I want to read it over again. <laughs> Rain is falling now still. When is your falling? The man literally speak to the altar. Oh, Tasha, you just joined in. Right? So the lesson you need to learn when it comes to spiritual warfare, attack the altars, break the covenants, pray against the evil, the evil spirits and all that, but don't attack the flesh. But he spoke to the altar. Another one is that um, not everybody who come to you say that they are a Christian, they are a prophet like, they are a prophet, they are a Christian like you, they are a believer like you or anything like that. Any day they come to you saying all these things, but telling you to, but telling you to transgress God's word, stay far from them. God, they, are, they are trying to get you into trouble with God. And after you get into trouble with God, they will laugh at you. They will laugh. Man of God, they will probably bury you and walk free and continue in the evil. And still continue in the evil same way. I'm telling you, this is a lesson for me and this walk doing this type of work and this is a lesson for all of us who are on this walk I'm telling you guys you don't give yourself over to ungodly people don't let people come to you with all this talk quoting even all these scriptures to you guys and but still trying to get into trouble with God when you get into trouble, when you get into trouble with God I'm telling you you're in real trouble I don't mind getting in trouble with, 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 with people anymore. I don't care if people don't want to, don't don't like me. I don't care if people want to fight me or anything like that. I'm trying to just keep things right, real and right with God. I'm just trying to get things real and right with God. Right? So guys, don't trust every spirit. Don't trust everybody. Don't trust nobody according to the scriptures. In Job chapter Job chapter 15, verse 15, the Bible clearly states that even God don't even put trust in our saints. Um, the original meaning for saints is um, the set apart one, something like that. Set apart one, set be set apart. Guys, go over the scripture and read it and think while they're reading. Think while they're reading, guys. I'm telling you, powerful one today. Powerful one today, guys. Power, powerful one today. Powerful one. First Kings chapter thirteen. 
Oh yeah, Elizabeth. It's a, it's a, it's a powerful one today. Powerful one today, guys. <laughs> I think I've learned the hard way in many ways. Um, God bless Tash. I learned the hard way in many ways. But thank God I overcome. This is better. I thank God for you, Brother Travis. All praise to the Most High God of Israel through our Lord Jesus Christ. You know, I'm grateful that God has given me all these revelations. That God is allowing me to perceive, um, to, to learn His scriptures. I remember one time I used to read the scripture and I never used to understand what I'm reading. <laughs> I was reading, I was go by it, and I was like, what are you really saying? What is being, being said here? But I'm glad that God has given me the revelation and it's helping me along the walk and it's helping other people too. You know, flesh and blood can't teach the truth, guys. Only Spirit can actually teach. Hallelujah. Only Spirit can actually teach you that, guys. Only Spirit, flesh and blood can reveal the truth to you. So flesh and blood never revealed this unto me. So you have opened my eyes to many things. All praises to God. All praises to God for that, um, Elizabeth. The most I worked through me to, to give you a message. All praises to God. Every single praise, all honor, all glory, all magnification is unto his name. We bless his name at this moment. Hallelujah. We bless his name at this moment. We bless his name. Because even when Travis, Brother Travis is gone. If God kingdom not come, when Brother Travis is gone, the same spirit will be working through other people too. Different flesh, but same spirit. That same spirit that's working through me you now to, to teach you all this will be working through somebody else again. And, and that same spirit is working through a whole lot of people right now who's teaching, who, who's teaching the truth. So we give all praises to his name. We give all praises to his name. So let me just um, end this one by just leaving you guys with a prayer. Krista said, so, um, when, <coughs> when we put it in our spirit, even when we don't understand, He will give us, give wisdom eventually. Yeah, for real. And it will start to draw back things to your remembrance. Like I used to read a whole lot of things that I don't, that, that I don't understand. And then when I start to get the understanding from one scripture, other scriptures start popping up. I'm like, oh, that's why, him say, that's why, the most I say in a word, this and this and this. Oh, that no, that makes sense why God sent me to pray for my enemy. No, I understand why God sent me to bless them. I also just have to get it. Let me choose to have to get it. Oh, all this time. When God said to do this, I'm looking like, why God sent me to do that? No, I understand. No, I understand. Alright, guys, join me in prayer. Join me in prayer. Almighty Father God, we thank you, Lord God of Israel. We magnify your name. We praise your holy name in the heavens of the heavens of the heavens. Through our Lord Jesus Christ. Yahshua, Imashiach, Yahweh Shai. But of a name they want to call Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We praise your mighty name, O oh Father God, for your divine writings, for your divine words manifested through the holy men by your Holy Spirit, Father God. We thank you for the word as, that is helping us as teaching us vital lessons in this time and space as the time get darker and darker as the time get more perilous and perilous father god we need your word we need we need to follow your word to the t as best as possible so we thank you lord for your word and we thank you for your holy spirit and giving us understanding of truth oh father god i pray for each and everyone upon this life whether in private or public as under, my, under the sound of my voice that they may learn something very vital from this and apply to their lives so that your name may be honored I pray, O oh Father God, that in everybody who's here, that their light may so shine, that you may be glorified, mighty one. I pray that they may be edified, O oh Father God, by such a session today, Father God. We thank you for this word. I pray for each and every one who is going through any type of spiritual battle at this moment, Father God, to arise for them, O oh Father God, and fight their battle for them. I pray, O oh Father God, that each and every one of them may repent of their sins, mighty one, and clean up themselves, O oh Father one. Father God, that they may fight the fight 
the way you're that we are supposed to fight though father god thank you for the scripture that teaches that we should not be praying against man our flesh and blood but praying against the altars and the covenants and all the spiritual forces that are trying to come against our chances mighty one thank you oh lord for these lessons that we teach us that we should, that we should never put trust in man regardless of what they are professing out of their mouth mighty father god but to put our trust in you for it written in your word that we should trust in you with all our heart and lean not even to our own understanding but in all our ways we must acknowledge you and you shall direct our path, our, our path Father God. So help us more Father God to trust in you, to believe in you and to trust in your words even when things don't make sense mighty Father God. Help us to trust in your word, help us to bless our enemies continually, help us to pray for them oh Father God but also help us to fight the spiritual fight oh Father God. Help us to put on the full armor of God that we may come against the wiles of the devil and that we may stand in the evil day. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray all this and all, all that I feel to, to say, Almighty Father God, let it be done according to your divine will. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to your name, Mighty Father God. We thank you. We thank you, Lord, for your blessings. We thank you, Lord, for your glory. We thank you, Lord, for everything. We thank you for all that you have done, all that you're doing, and all that you're, that you're about to do, Lord. And while you're doing it, Father God, just keep us in it. Keep us in your will. Praises be to your name, Father God. We bless your name. Praises be to your name. We gather here in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And you say in your word, we're two or more is gathered in your name. You're in the midst. Christ is in the midst. And so, Father God, we know you're in the midst of us now. We praise your name. We magnify your name. We bless your name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Amen and amen. Amen and amen. For all those who are here for the first time, uh -huh, thank you, wifey. For all those here for the first time, ensure that you subscribe to the YouTube channel. I will be reposting this later on. According to God's will, I will post this later on. Um, so you can watch it over. And guys, share it out. Um, the, the channel is growing, and I'm thankful for that. I'm thankful for your support. I'm thankful that it's actually growing. We're now at 1,500 subscribers. I saw it this morning. That's wonderful. So guys, let's continue to support. Continue to share this out. And continue to help this grow. You know, and continue to pray for me as I pray for you all. Right? Let's bless each and every one that was here now. So Charlene, thank you for being here. But Amika, thank you for being here. Style Radio, blessings to you. Cutie Brown, blessings to you. Venomous, blessings. God bless Tash. God bless you. Tonyan, my wife, blessings to you. Um, who is this? Jenny, Geneva Hall, blessings to you, Geneva. Crystal, blessings to you, sister. Nikki, blessings to Nikki. Jesse, Kev, blessings. Miss um, Sh Chanel Francis, blessings. Nikki, blessings as well. Elizabeth, blessings. Oh, you're late. I will repost this. I will repost it. Um, Chanel Francis, I'm going to repost it. God, this one is. It's powerful for me. I'm teaching myself while I'm teaching it as well. I'm actually teaching my own self while I'm actually teaching it too. I'm telling you. So God bless each and every one of you. I pray the most I may cover you. I pray the most I may put a shield of protection around each and every one of you. Especially for all those who are on this path who are seeking truth and trying to live by truth. And trying to live to please God and not man. I pray. That the most I may bless and keep you in everything that you do. Every single thing that you do. Alright? Until the next video, until the next live, according to God's will, shalom, peace, grace, and mercy from God the Father and our Lord Jesus Christ.